Welcome back to uh, Comfort Breeze Complacency. This is episode nine. Today we're joined with a training partner of mine, a good friend, and personally the best athlete I've ever met. So we got a Brock Hole, professional triathlete for Team Ganda. Thanks for having me on. I'm yeah. excited to, to chat with you. Yeah, thanks for coming on the show. So um, we met a number of years ago through a training group out here, Balance Point. But yep. do you kind of want to just run through – uh, maybe like early life to where you are now just kind of yeah so I grew up in uh, in uh, Alberta a small town 3,000 people uh, moved here in 2014 uh, with my family and uh, started uh, pursuing triathlon more seriously in 2014 um, I grew up swimming cross-country running just cycling around town stuff like that and uh, yeah just kind of fell in love with the sport quit hockey and started doing this. So, um, yeah, since then I've been with balance point coach Luke, I met Nick and, um, yeah, just, um, have slowly worked my way through the ranks. Now I'm racing world cup and, uh, I've done a world series, hoping to do more this year. And, uh, the goal is Paris Olympic games. Oh yeah. Yeah. I remember, uh, when I first came out, I, I played college baseball and then, um, I, got like injury stuff and wanted to keep competing. So I came out or did triathlon with like an online coach one year. And then okay. after that didn't work very well. And I remember in the summer, like scouring online, looking for coaches in yeah. BC in Kelowna. And then I found Luke and just like happened upon like a gold mine just without yeah. even like knowing it. I remember coming to like, all you guys were way younger at that point than yeah. me. I remember coming in as like the oldest guy <laughs> and coming to one of the track sessions. It was like January or something. I remember and that. Yeah, yeah. Seeing everybody who was along like the, the boardwalk next to the track and seeing yeah. everybody. And I was like, oh, I'm going to smoke these guys. Yeah. <laughs> and then like, I remember going as hard as I could and being like right behind you on the first set. Yeah. And like, oh yeah, I can hold my own. And then like, you guys just like just humbled me just like that. I'm like, <laughs> holy, I got so much to learn. That was but, that was my fastest track set in a while, though. I can tell you that because yeah. I could feel you on my heels there. Yeah. yeah. No, it was cool, though, just coming in and then, like, yeah, that whole learning process of, obviously, Coach Luke training all the elite juniors yeah. and then the, like, group of us that started training together and everything. And, yeah, it was super cool to come in and, uh, yeah, learn from you guys right away from that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, awesome. when you When you met Luke, were you – like younger you were younger right when you met yeah so uh I was 13 when I met Luke um so we'd moved to town started with the swim club the liquid lightning swim club in West Kelowna um and I was swimming I guess six days a week um just like full-time swimming and then I was biking and running just on my own um and I went to um one of the youth elite national series that they had at the time in um I don't know it was Manitoba or something and I just got absolutely smoked swam well and then got smoked on the bike in the run and I was like you know growing up doing kids of steel I always won and so it was like what 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 do I need to change here um so my mom went to um the uh, bike shop in town and asked them if they had any knew of any bike or running coaches and they gave her uh Luke's card because he was also bike fitting for the shop and uh they said he's the best there is and she sent him an email and he emailed back within two minutes and said, we're actually, I'm sitting down with Andrew Sellers, the, um, who started Balance Point, um, and we're discussing starting a junior program. And she was like, all right. And he said, um, meet us at the track on Friday. So I went to track on Friday and, um, yeah, went the next couple of Fridays and then, um, signed up with Luke like that month. So, yeah. Yeah. Was, uh, your younger brother Lincoln uh he was doing triathlon as well did he start at the same time as you or was he like coming up yeah so you? luke didn't want to lincoln was 10 yeah i guess <laughs> so young. he didn't want lincoln to be on a, a 30 hour week training program <laughs> um lincoln was also swimming as much as i was so he was already practically doing what i was doing um so lincoln would just come to fridays mm. and then he'd come to the monday easy ride um and then I guess that only lasted a couple months and Lincoln was doing everything I was doing. Yeah. Um, so yeah, he would, I Lincoln's first track workout. I remember he like, he did, oh, it was a big set. I don't remember what it was, but, and he pushed him. Luke was yelling, you know, just like, come on, go, go. And Lincoln like comes across the line and just throws up. 
And Luke was like, wow, this kid, like, already pushing that hard on his first one. So, yeah, it was yeah, it was pretty cool. But, yeah, Lincoln was also pretty much doing everything with me at that point. So, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Having somebody, like, in your household that can push you and compete against like that must have been nice to have. Yeah, yeah, that was that was nice, I think, just, like, we also just grew up watching, like, the Brownlee brothers and everything. And so I always wanted to, you know, be racing – with my brother, hopefully on the world stage and everything. And I think uh, Lincoln made other choices, but if he uh, had stuck with it, I, I really think that we could have done that for sure. Yeah. 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 He was pretty talented for sure. Yeah. Um, <laughs> when you first started, so was swimming kind of like your best when you first started? Yeah. So, um, I didn't really like sports at all when I was little. Um, my parents put me in soccer, like, I don't know, every sport you can imagine. And I just like, I did not want anything to do with it. I just sat on the field as a little guy and just like, uh, I didn't, I, I just had no competitive bone in my body. But then, um, uh, yeah, I don't know. I started just like, uh, reading like hockey books and things like that when I was little. And then I was like, I don't know, it was all about the NHL. So I asked my dad if I could play hockey when I, when I was seven and signed up um we got equipment on Kijiji played my first practice and I was just hooked so put a rink in the backyard it was all hockey and then um I was also just swimming at that point but I was I had no passion for swimming so it was just I wanted to play hockey and I had to go to swim practice and then um yeah at some point I I don't know I just I started getting faster in the pool and then it's obviously more fun when you're better better yeah, yeah. so I was starting to actually do well for my age at races and stuff and um, made provincials. And then, yeah, it was all, I was suddenly all in on swimming. I was also playing hockey. And I, I remember like when I was 10, I was like, I'm going to go to the Olympics in swimming and I'm going to go to the Olympics in hockey and I'm going to play in the NHL. <laughs> Obviously that's impossible, but that's what I wanted to do. And then eventually it was just swimming. And then I guess it just shifted to triathlon, but yeah. 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 No, like I, like I've said to numerous people that I've talked to you, other people about you, it's like every time we'd been in the pool or something, you were like the best swimmer there. And then yeah. we'd go like do the Knox mountain challenge climb for yeah. biking. And like, you'd beat the guys who were just cyclists and then running, <laughs> yeah. you're running like these crazy times. So it was always cool to see like all these sports on their own. You could just be like elite by your lead at all three, which is like beating the people that, are just focusing on the one was super inspiring to me because I do like to do a lot of different things as well. Yeah. And, uh, just knowing that you can get better at these things if you just put more time in, right? Yeah. Like it's long as you're putting the amount of time that each of them needs, you can just build a bigger work capacity and be able to do more. I, yeah, I think so. I think also the the three sports complement each other well. Right. Mm. So like, um, yeah, and I, I started with Luke. He w- he noticed that I was just a terrible bike handler, so he put me in bike races, right? And it took a little while, and I started getting good at bike racing. But that was also all most of my fitness at that point was coming from from the pool mm-hmm. and coming from running and things like that, right? So I think yeah, it it really does translate across well. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's just a matter of. Um, choosing which one or or to do all three, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is your favorite of the three? I would say it's still the run, even yeah. though the run is. I'd say at the World Cup and above level, it's the run is where you get like that's where the gaps happen. So that's where I lose every race that I've lost in the last two years is the run. But it's still my favorite because I I I don't know I running's just it's yeah it's I feel like it's the most pure competition there can be. I'd say running and um, probably mixed martial arts, yeah, in my fighting. opinion. Yeah. Because there's no technology involved, right? It's hand to hand combat or like how fast can you go, just you. Mm-hmm. So I, that, that's what I like about um, both of those sports, but running specifically. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's just what you got. <laughs> yeah. What do you have? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so coming, like preparing for Paris in 2024. What's kind of like the process of like getting these points and getting like um, to be one of the few people that goes for Team Canada to compete? 
Yeah, so it's very uh, complicated. So World Triathlon has their own criteria, and then um, each nation and federation has their own criteria as well. So it's kind of like molding the two. Um, So um, there's Olympic qualification ranking, and you kind of have to – each country is only guaranteed – well, you're not guaranteed any, but most countries will get two spots. Um, and to get three spots, all three of your athletes have to be in the top 30 in the Olympic ranking, which is pretty crazy to have three from one country in the top 30 in the world. Mm-hmm. So that's why usually there's only two or maybe three countries who do that. Um, which ones are those usually? Uh, it would be France, Great Britain, and um, maybe Australia. Okay. Yeah, on the men's side. The, uh, the women's side, the U.S. maybe, and then um, Great Britain and... I mean, maybe France as well, but okay. yeah, they're, the Europeans are quite dominant still. So, um, yeah, but then you also have to obviously beat the other Canadians. And then there's also ways to expedite the process, like a top five at the Olympic test event this year just guarantees you're in the Olympics. Um, and the thing is, no one, unless you're hitting the automatic qualification, no one really knows until the period's over, which is May twenty, um, May twenty fourth of twenty twenty four. Okay, so so like a year, yeah, literally, basically a year right now, a year to make it happen. So, yeah, it's it's super cutthroat. Every race counts, and yeah, it's just about you can't really think about the end. You just got to be like, all right, this race I have to crush. I, this race I have to do this in this race, and yeah, right now I'm seventy sixth in the qualification ranking and third Canadian. So okay. I'd like to move to top two, obviously. So mm-hmm. that's the goal over this year. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I bet you can do it. <laughs> Thanks. What um, what was kind of like some of these performances that maybe boosted you up, like your kind of proudest performances? Um. Yeah, so last year, it was really my first year racing World Cup. I'd done one in 2021 and crashed out. Um, that was in Tanyang. Um, and then this year, um, or this last year, I started in Italy and I raced, I think, four World Cups last year and one World Series. Um, I think proving myself enough to get into a World Series was pretty cool um, because I didn't actually have the criteria. I was I was selected um, because they thought I could do well. I didn't do well, but at least I showed that, you know, I was performing well enough in the World Cups. Um, And then, yeah, I think just the proudest part for me has just been You know, last year, um, my world ranking was still so low, but I knew I could race these World Cups, and I had the criteria. So I would show up to events, and um, I wasn't even on the start line until, like, there were a couple where I got on, like, 12 hours before. Um, I think Hamburg, even, I got on, like, 10 hours before. So they just send you a message to be like, hey, you're, you're on the start list. Can you come to room, whatever, of this hotel? And they'd hand me my package, and I'm like, all right, I'm on the start line tomorrow. And they're handing me my stickers in the morning, and I'm just like, this is, this is the biggest races in the in the world for triathlon. And I'm squeaking on, and I bought a plane ticket to get there, and I didn't even know if I was going to race. And, you know, I'm the last one called out, and then just, you know, there's only one spot on the pontoon for me at that point because I'm the last guy, and just see what I got. And, I mean. As long as you're in there, right? As long as you're in it, right? It's just like. Swimmers say, if you got a lane, you got a chance. So, yeah, yeah I think last year, I would, I th- uh, f- three or four of those were top twenties, and um, yeah, I was proud of that. So this year, it's just about top tens, top fives, podiums. So yeah, yeah. So when did you kind of feel like you start to belong with like those world's best guys? Was it kind of like training with some guys at camps, or was it like? during the races seeing that, Hey, I'm like right shoulder, to shoulder, these guys are, well, it's kind of weird because, um, um, as humbly as I can say it, I've felt like I've, I've been there for years. Um, and I felt like I, I belonged. I felt like I, like I could be the best in the world, like for a long time. It's just a matter of like going through the steps in the process. And I still believe that. So, um, yeah, like when I was, um, started racing elite races when I was 16, 
I would tell myself like when they're calling my name and I'm walking to the start line, I'd be like, I'm the one to beat. I'm the one to beat. I'm the one to beat because I knew that if I told myself that I would race like I was, um, yeah, like I was the one to beat. If you're racing reactive, then you're just like letting everything happen and trying to manage it. But if I was like, no, I'm the one who makes the surge. I'm the one who closes the gap. You're just going to race better. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I always have felt that. And I guess last year, um, just getting into my first World Cup in Arzakena, and I came out of the water, and Johnny Brownlee was like five meters in front of me, and I was like, "Yeah, it's like I made it." Yeah. <laughs> so that was cool. And then, um, yeah, I think just each race, I felt more like I I belonged, and like some of these races, Luke's there, some of them he's not. But I'll call him after and be like, "Man, I wish I could race another one like tomorrow because." I learned so you learned much. Some and you just want to implement it right away. Yeah. yeah. Like, oh, man. I think also I didn't race that much as a junior, just like for financial-wise. And so, I, um, yeah, I feel like I'm catching up on this experience. But, like, the training I've done since I was, like, 19, 18, like, it's on par with some of the top guys. So I really don't think there's any reason why I can't get there. It's just a matter of, like, putting all the pieces together and mm. – yeah, it's a game, really. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I know that personally through, like, doing ultra things. As soon as you finish one, I do, like, after-action reports from all. Yeah. And then, like, write all my thoughts down right away yeah. so that I can, like, go back and look at them. But immediately you're, like, or during it even, you're pulling something from, like, oh, I remember that part of this yeah. one. It could be a different sport completely, but it could help you in that moment. And I'm sure yeah. it's the same with those races where, like, you just like feel something that clicks and you're like, Oh, you remember that from yeah. last time. And like, I can imagine it's even more for you. If you're racing for five times as long as I am, you have like five times as many things that you're like, Oh wow. Yeah. You yeah. take a lot in. It's almost like you remember like every, every, it's like one of those things when I used to play football back in high school, when you'd watch football game on TV, it'd be yeah. like, Oh, that's a long game. But when you're playing in it, it goes by like that. Awesome. And I've found the same with, ultra stuff or racing in general is like you're aware of how long it is, but the, when you like set your mind up for something so far ahead, yeah. Like if you were to do a, let's say a two hours swim the pool when you're halfway done at an hour, you're like, Oh, I still got another hour. Yeah. But when you're trying to swim 24 hours, it's true. When you hit two hours, you're like, Oh, that went by like that. Yeah. So it's just all these different mind games and stuff. But that's true. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's cool here. The, you just want to get right back out there and do it yeah. again. Yeah. When um, I remember hearing you say uh, about motivation, didn't you used to put a photo above your bed? Yes. And like, do you, for motivation, is it like your main goal of being at the Olympics for uh, triathlon, like Team Canada? Is that like what everything like is the driving force or is it like, your smaller goals going up to it like oh i got a place at this race certain or i gotta or like how do you how do you stay motivated basically um yeah i think like inevitably the end goal is something that keeps me motivated um and honestly is like just going to paris isn't even the end goal for me like i want to do this all like for for a couple years after the olympics and I want to, you know, I want to win a world championship. I want to, I want to go back to the Olympics and like hopefully win like all these things. Um, and I think at the end of the day, like you have to stay process oriented on your goals. Otherwise you just like won't make it right. Like um, if I wake up and just try and run like world record pace every day, I'm just not going to make it right. So, like, I have to pay attention to just these little goals along the way and build and build and build. And I think that's something that I've learned more in the last even two years is just, like, that it does take a long time. Yeah. And it's not like you can just, like, fast track it, mm -hmm. um, especially in endurance sport where it just takes so long to build the capacity and, like, all the that. The structure. And, yeah. The, yeah, the structure and – um, I remember Luke saying, like, yeah, the workouts you're doing now will be helping you in, like, three years. Yeah. And stuff like that, which yeah. is crazy. Even, like, lots of the Zone 2 work that I did when I was 13, that didn't really 
start to show until I was like 17. Mm -hmm. Um, And yeah, I mean, when I sat down with Luke and we chatted about stuff, we basically made like, he said that this program is a 10 year program. And I mean, I'm on year nine right now. So it's, it ends in 2024. So it's about. So like Paris was a goal when you started this basically. Paris was the goal when I started. Yeah. Yeah. Which you got to be processing. I think that was a big thing. Like, one thing I really remember taking from Luke was like goal motivated, process oriented. Like yeah. you really got to be in love with the process and it's got to be like a lifestyle, not oh, just like sure. gritting your teeth and like trying to get through it. Yeah. Yeah. I think I, like I said, I've learned that more in the last two years too. It's like, um, even like four years ago, um, I guess just before COVID I was racing well and like one of the top juniors in the world, but um, I, I hated long rides mm. like Saturdays. I did not enjoy long rides. It was like, why do I have to be out there for five <laughs> hours? Like this is <laughs> like it. Sure. I'm getting fit, fitter and everything, but this is like super boring mm-hmm. and I didn't really enjoy it. And I think now I'm at the point where I'm just like, like, this is like the life I've chosen. And like, this is pretty cool. Like I'm not, you know, I'm, I've worked a lot of jobs and this is the best one. So yeah. Like, man, now I, I love it, you know? Yeah. So I think it's just about, yeah, making it a lifestyle and, like, decide, like, choosing that this is, yeah, this is the process you want to go through. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I also found, like, I know personally, um, let's say going out for a long ride, like you said, uh, like a point A around back to point A. Yeah. I found personally that, like, I could, or even riding on the train or, like, in the winter, it's just, like, trying to get through it yeah. or like, but I've done like these bike treks and I've found that like going from point A to point B and like making tangible progress on yeah. something. I've almost like, it doesn't even feel like training as much. It's just like, Oh, that's the goal. You just get there uh, and yeah. the mode is bike. I can see that. And yeah. then, but you end up going all day and it doesn't feel like you've trained all day, but you've got that like structure. Yeah. And then like, I, ju- I just find like, the actual adventure of it is I bet, there. Yeah. And yeah, I bet you it's the same, like going around the lake with a group of guys is a lot better than just like grinding oh, yeah. it out in the dark and the trainer. So like, yeah, yeah, no, it's true. And it does help to have other people around too. Yeah. For I guess sure. for your stuff, there's only a couple of people crazy enough to do it. So <laughs> well, I found like a lot of that mental space you're in, you yeah. do spend a lot of time alone. So like, you do have to get used to it. Like, yeah. Being sure. alone. Um, and knowing how you can get through that without being distracted by like music or external motivators. Yeah. But I mean, it is nice to train with people as yeah, well. So for sure. Um, yeah. But, uh, talking about all the jobs you've worked. Yeah. Um, I remember the days when like you would be grinding construction and then just come in like dogged to the night session, just like yeah. sunburnt and like hot <laughs> and, and steel toes and stuff. Um, you got a partnership with mission group. Yes. I do. Um, how much has that helped you out? Uh, mission group has been like a miracle and a dream come true for me because, um, honestly without mission group, um, and Jonathan Friesen helping me last year, I would not have raced this entire last year. There's just no way it would have happened. Um, I might have done, like, one World Cup or something. And chances are it wouldn't have gone well either because I was – before I got mission group, I was – I was um, I'd wake up and swim in the morning, and then I'd work, whatever, seven hours. Um, and then I would – train in the evening and then I eat dinner at like 10 PM and then I go to bed and then I wake up again at five and go swim. So it's just, there's no recovery in there. And there's a difference between like hitting a, like a quick half an hour jog after work and oh. trying to train to be the best in the world. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was still doing like 28 hours a week Yeah, and then also working like almost 40. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, it's just and physical a, work and physical work. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so it's it's not easy, and um, yeah, so uh, Mission Group has been amazing. It's so nice to have um, local um, companies, like, supporting mm-hmm. um, youth sport um, and just, like, sport in general, and um, yeah, I think, yeah, it's just awesome to see, and yeah, they've just been amazing at helping me out this last year, and um, 
yeah, so we've, uh, I sat down with John and uh, Narinder in 2021, and we started talking about this, and it came into fruition last year, and um, yeah, they've just been supporting me all the way along, and um, yeah, I'm just excited to see where we can take it, so. Yeah, no, John's awesome. Yeah, he uh, he also helped out with my swims the past couple times. Yes. Uh, went to swim the Okanagan that. Lake. And his son, Austin, through Aqua. But, yeah, I yeah, know it's been awesome just knowing them. And they supported, uh, like, Balance Point as well. And yeah. Luke's squad and all that. So, yeah. They're yeah, they're just great people and very generous and, um, yeah, just very willing to give back to the community, which is awesome to see. Yeah. Yeah. With all this travel that you've done, what's, like, your favorite maybe race you've done or favorite place you've been? Because you got to see, you've seen, like, the whole world right now. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Um. Well, uh, to be honest, I really loved Germany, even though that was my worst race last year. Hamburg is just awesome. Um, that was, like, I used to wake up at, like, because of the time difference, like, wake up really early and watch the mixed team relay and the Hamburg race because I always thought it was the coolest stop on the world tour. Yeah. Um, so then last year, just to race it, um, I mean, I, I got 51st out of 53. Terrible race. And... Um, the whole, you know, ride and run, I was just like, this, like, this sucks. Like, this is where I've always wanted to be, and I'm at the back. Like, this is, right? But um, going through the cobbled section on the last lap of the bike and then every lap of the run, and there were there were thousands of people around there, and they were, ch- like, everyone was chanting. I was in 51st, and everyone was chanting, hole, 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 and it was like, it hurt my ears, and I was, like, at the back of the pack, so that was pretty cool, to be honest. Just like, yeah, like just being like, wow, I'm at the world stage, even though I, it's, yeah, it's not going the way I wanted to. But, um, yeah, just it's such a cool place. And everyone over there loves triathlon. And it's, yeah, it's just awesome. So, yeah, I remember yeah. like I've been at a couple of those on the age group side. So, Lasan yeah. and then uh, in Abu Dhabi. And yeah, you see like when it's a men's elite, yeah. it's like the helicopters come out and just like, thousands of people line the start and yeah. are the fences and everything so it's so cool to see like yeah and everybody there is like triathletes and fit or athletes and yeah like, from all around the world and then to see like just the 50 best so many people Earth, yeah. and like yeah it's super cool yeah. to see that is awesome um talking about like meeting luke and everything i know luke has like a very um science-based approach to like training and everything mm-hmm. um and like to be at this level you obviously have to yeah um i know as well though to be like competing with the best you obviously have to have the ability to suffer and grit Mm -hmm. how much you think uh like what is the weight difference between um like your the scientific side of training and Mm -hmm. then just like gritting your teeth and competing and like finding a way kind of um yeah, so I would say that in in train like Luke obviously and Andrew everything is very scientific based and the way that we do our efforts and the way that we um train and what zones we're in and what we're thinking about with our breathing and I've got like four sensors on me at all times and I'm looking at the numbers constantly. Um and it does dictate the way that I train each day, right? Um but I think it also depends on the athlete a little bit. Um, some athletes, um, if you take away all the sensors, they're going to slowly start to train a little bit faster every single day. Mm. And then you take away the sensors for another athlete, and they're just going to start training a little bit slower every single day. Um, and I think that just comes down to like personality, motivation, whatever it might be. Um, I think these things keep you grounded, the science, science of it as well. Um, and just having controlling the controllables, I think is, is important and it does teach you to be, um, equate how you're feeling with what you're getting feedback from the numbers and all these things. So when you get in the race and you're no longer thinking about the heart rate, the muscle oxygenation, the VO2, any of that, um, you already have like a really good sense of how your body reacts to things. And then, yeah, it really does just come down to, like, how tough you can be. So there are some sessions where, you know, it's it's as hard as you can go. But um, 
again, in this kind of sport, like you can't do that every day. So, um, yeah, often like you, you never go that full 100 until you're actually in the race. Um, but yeah, I think it's, it's just about setting yourself up mentally before the race as well. And yeah, I think anyone can really do it. Honestly, I don't even think you have to be a high performance athlete to be able to push a hundred. Mm-hmm. You just have to be willing to do it. Mm-hmm. So I don't, yeah, I don't know, but I do think that they complement each other well. And it is about knowing your body and how, how hard you can push. Like I've been in races before where I know that if I push any harder right now, I'm going to blow up in like 500 meters and I'm not going to make it to the finish line. So it's like riding that 99.9%. Um, yeah, you can't, you know, it's, if it's a two hour race, you can't sprint the entire thing. You just can't. Um, so it is about choosing when to put down the 100%. And I think the guy who wins the race does it the best. So, yeah. 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 That's some things I've had to learn with the ultra stuff is like, it feels so good if you maybe had like some music playing and you just like want to rip a run, but it's like all that stuff, like FFA, like Mm -hmm. zone two stuff. They just got to like live in that area. And obviously like you do some speed stuff and that, but it's just like, yeah, you really got to like know your zones yeah um for as far as like injuries and stuff i know you said like this past little bit you've dealt with some things that have been like frustrating um have there been like big injuries throughout your career or like how's coming back from those been um yeah i've had i've had quite a few things over the years um nothing that's really stopped me from from competing um it seems like I always manage it just in time to race. Um, so hopefully that continues to happen. But, um, I mean, over the years, I've I've had torn Achilles. I've had um, what I think was a stress fracture in my heel. Um, uh, hernia, uh, just like, oh, I don't even know, like lots of things. Um, yeah just sprained things and all, all that, um, torn ligaments in my knee, lots of stuff. But, um, yeah, I think, um, also this last year I've really started to take more seriously, um, my strength and conditioning and stuff like that. So I work with a guy in town now, um, for that. And, um, yeah, when I was 18, I could, you know, just like, like I, like we said, I could work construction and then go, do a brick set and then go home and also swam that morning and Mm -hmm. I don't know, do an evening jog. But now, like if I was to do that, not even that I'm that old, but like, yeah, my body would just like fall apart. I feel like, so it is about like managing, um, yeah, knowing your weaknesses and, um, trying to train them just like anything, really the physiology side, but also the strength side. So, um, yeah, there's lots of things I've worked on in this last year for my um, core and um, Achilles strength and just like durability, I guess. Um, it's also, as I've gotten older, I've gotten faster and I've also trained more. And at some point you reach a structural limit of like how much your body can actually take mm-hmm. and something has to break down. So um yeah, when I was younger and I used to get, like, I'd get shin splints, like, all the time when I was, like, 14. And Luke used to say, you're just, you're honestly, you're too fast for the body you have. Right now, like, yeah. Yeah, like, if, <laughs> if you were, like, 10 years older, this would not be a problem. Mm-hmm. But you've got, like, little bones and you're running, like, 330s on the track just constantly. Something's going to break if we don't, like, fix, you know. So it became, you know, managing intensity and then also just adding strength and conditioning in there. So um, I've gotten better with that as I've gotten older and I haven't had any problems in the last um, 10 months, basically. So, awesome. Yeah. That's good to hear. Have you found, um, like I know coming from baseball, I learned like so much through that coaching and it was like a great base of strength and conditioning and like yeah. mental and everything. And then like learning more science-based stuff from Luke as well as like the endurance side of things, but being able to put them all together as just like an all around athlete. Yeah. Um, did you, I know you said you played hockey. Did you do any other like activities you feel like help benefit or is it more or less just the triathlon plus the strength and conditioning stuff? 
Um, yeah, honestly, um, like I did play hockey growing up, which I think definitely helped with just like a little bit of power and, and some speed definitely helped my running at that point in my life. Um, but in terms of just like actual something that was strength and conditioning like, I don't think I really did anything at that point. It was, yeah, just swimming, biking and running. So, um, that's that's why I've slowly added more as I've gotten older. Um, and I think triathletes also worry about doing too much, like, you know, weights and stuff, because you end up putting on muscle and, you know, it's watts per kilogram and all yeah. these things too. Um, so, yeah, um, I think the best way to look at it is, like, it's it's prehab and it's it's not even strength and conditioning. It's just, um, it's like activation of these muscles so that, you're minimizing impact on on joints and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. I guess just tell people till you race Olympic and sprint distance. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, so quick races. Yes. But, yeah. 50 minutes and an hour and 50. So Yeah. How was the jump from – because I remember you were just racing sprint for a while and then you jumped up to the Olympic distance. How yeah. Was, how was that – jump because i know like you obviously could do the distances on their own but like i remember you were like putting it all together a couple of years back yeah um actually it, it is a big jump and it um still i think the the biggest thing and i'm a i'm a great swimmer but that last like couple hundred meters of the swim i'm like wow this is long not even that i'm like super tired but i'm just like man like 1500 and 750 like 750 goes by like yeah. that like it's it's eight minutes and it's just i don't know you don't even the first two minutes you don't it's just your adrenaline's so high you don't even notice it and then you're fighting with people and then you're coming out and that's it and then you're it's on eight, the bike it's eight minutes for you yeah <laughs> exactly not for me no <laughs> but, yeah. yeah so more like what is it 45 hours for you well yeah. <laughs> we'll get there um but yeah so um yeah, the run actually is the hardest to put together, though, I would say, um, just because, yeah, you're already an hour and 15 minutes into the race, and a sprint distance is a total of 50 minutes. So you've got an extra 25, and then you also have to run. So I think metabolically, it's almost like doing a marathon mm. in terms of just, like, calories and everything and the the effort that you're putting out, right? So, um, yeah, that last 5K of the run – that's where you really see like who's put in the years and years and years of training. Um, and that's why a lot of juniors can do it. And then it's really hard to switch. And I mean, yeah, I did, I ran lots of 33 minute 10 Ks. I, I could run, I've, I could run 14s when um, just straight out when I was 18. Um, but, and then I could run 15 off the bike, but then I'd, double and add three minutes, which is a terrible conversion. Um, and yeah, last year was the first year where I finally ran a 31 mid on a, on a hilly run. And is that after the bike? That was after the bike. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. So I ran 31 29 in Montevideo to get the, that was for U 23 Pan Am, um, uh, championships where I won. So yeah, that was good. And my last kilometer there was also, um, a 239 for the last kilometer so i showed that i had that was to drop the guys i was running with and win so that proved to myself i guess that i had that um i was no longer running 33 it was 31 30 but i also had a sprint at the end so or a long sprint so i wasn't cooked so and i bet yeah. like once you know you can do it even just once it's like in there right so yeah. you know like oh i can do this again even yeah. though, like, on X day it might not happen. Yeah. If you've done it, you know you can do it, which 100%. must give, like, a lot of confidence. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I know, like, for me in the ultra stuff, nutrition's big. Like, um, learning what you can eat and what you can't eat during the event. Yeah. Um, as well as, like, training for, like, just practicing it in training or just daily life. Like, yeah. practicing what you think is best before a race and all that. How is, like, what's, like, nutrition like for you now or, like, pre-race, during race? Um, yeah, so pre and during race, um, I do try and carb load the night before. I still, I, I believe that that really does um, help. 
Um, so there's a couple products I try and take for that, um, just drink mixes and things, and then also just eating a carb heavy meal the night before, some protein as well. And then didn't you say your go to is always pizza? Your pizza, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. pizza, or I actually do I do like a burger too. Oh yeah, yeah, pizza, burger, and fries. Yeah, nice. the night before, yeah. And then um, yeah, morning of actually I normally because our races usually start at like two thirty in the afternoon. Mm-hmm. So it's weird because it's like, do you eat breakfast and lunch and then you're kind of full before the race or do you, so I'll eat something little in the morning and then, um, at like four hours out, I'll have like a big bowl of like pasta or Mm. rice or something like that. Um, and then, yeah, normally I feel good for the race. Um, and then I also take, um, yeah, gels and more drink mix before just, totally topped up and then in the race i normally take about 150 um grams of carbs on the bike okay in the olympic distance um and then yeah that pretty much fuels me for the run as well um i'll take a gel with me on the run maybe and usually i take like a like salt um on the run as well just because um if the bike was hard enough usually that's where you'd get crampy or something like that on the run. So I have like a, a salt stick and usually if I feel anything coming on, just a little tap on the tongue and you're good to go already. So yeah, yeah. just, and they're giving us water, right? So there's mm-hmm. nothing in it. Yeah. It's if, yeah. And what's uh, tr- like nutrition like for just daily life and training and all that? Um, so like, do you eat like small meals throughout the day or do you eat bigger ones or the thing is, is, um, I, normally I wake up absolutely starving, like stomach grumbling every day. And so I'll have a big meal. I usually eat like four, four or five eggs every morning with, um, like toast or, um, something of that kind a carb. And then I also, um, I like eating some dairy. So I'll have like, um, some yogurt or something like that with honey or something like that. And then in the afternoon, It usually is kind of snacks all day just because I'm training and it's like there's no time to really fit in a meal. Mm -hmm. Um, And if I do, um, I normally eat before I swim, which a lot of people would (laughs) say that's not the thing to do. But I don't want to run on a full stomach or anything like that. So, um, And then, yeah, big, big dinner. I try and eat lots of protein, um, as clean as possible, um, avoid soy and things like that. And just, yeah, nutrient-dense, good foods. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of calories because you can't go wrong with just eating more. The more you eat, more you can train. So Yeah. Do you try and keep, like, like you're saying not to put on muscle? Like, um, are you trying to keep yourself at a certain weight or do you just, based on your training, you maintain at whatever weight you're um, To be honest, I haven't weighed myself in um, – well, actually, I did weigh myself a couple weeks ago, but I, I rarely weigh myself. Um, um, but, no, my weight really hasn't changed in the last, like, three years. Um, yeah, I'm at, like, 73 kilos, and it just doesn't change. Um, and I'm between 3 and 6% body fat, so it's not like I can lose fat. So at this point, either I lose muscle, yeah, and with losing muscle, I probably lose power. Or I just stay the same. Yeah. Or I, yeah, so I don't know. At this point, I'm just staying with exactly where I am right now, and I feel like this is where I'm strongest. For a while, I tried to kind of, you know, get to where, get my weight to where um, I had raced best before. But the problem is, is, like, I'm growing, and, Mm. like, um, I mean, I'm not growing anymore. But last year, I even grew another, like, half an inch. So, yeah, I don't think it's realistic to really choose a weight it's more really just how's training going um how are you feeling how's your energy and just kind of go off of that yeah and and if you have the engine for your body then whatever size you are yeah i remember when i was in baseball coming out baseball i was like 205 pounds and like explosive (laughs) and i remember trying to run on the track and like 5k i was just dead yeah and then after that season training with luke i was like counting oh. to the almond like stuff i remember getting down to like 163 oh you were shredded i, I was tiny but i got into like <laughs> bad like 
like almost eating bad habits, like yeah. eating because you'd like live for the meal. And then let's say you had a race or something, then you just like get in like just yeah. you're so focused on the food. And then like maybe a couple weeks after it like keeps up and then your weight fluctuates. So yeah. I found now just like I'm trying to put on some weight because swimming like overnight in the cold, it's better to have a bit of yeah. um like insulation. But yeah, for sure. then that also like sucks when you try and run with that extra weight. So yeah. I think I've found like a good way to do all disciplines. Everything with, yeah. But um, yeah, I know that that struggle for sure. Yeah. I do think it is good to like kind of have a weight that you just kind of stay at. Yeah. I feel like it is healthier. Yeah. Um, like I feel like most people have a natural weight, whatever like yeah. you are at, like yeah. level out at is probably just, that's probably healthy, you know? Yeah. As soon as I stopped training, though, I I put on like ten pounds, like like that. Yeah. So, yeah. I feel like my natural weight is probably ten pounds more than I am right now. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean, you're training so much; it's just whatever goes in gets burnt right away. Oh yeah, yeah exactly. So, what yeah. about? Um, I know something that's helped me a lot. I've done it like the past kind of three years more so. I started journaling, and okay. like I was mentioning the after action reports with ultras and stuff i started doing that more or less with every day and just like quick 10 15 20 minute yep like, write down your workouts your what you're thinking about this that like other life stuff um and then it also helps me kind of like visualize um where i was at in that moment or whatever i'm working on uh do you do like actively work on like mental skills or are they kind of more just intangible stuff um I do have like um like notes in my phone where I'll I'll put something if I feel like there's like a mental cue that I um you know like I I learned something today I need to remember to tell myself this I'll put it in there um I don't I don't physically write it down but I do have a couple places in my phone where I'll write something down um but I yeah I think that yeah just no um learning along the way and, and having little things that, that you can try and remember, I think is important. Mm-hmm. So I do do that, but, um, I don't know, maybe not to the extent that some people do. Um, but yeah, it, it is true that sometimes with between workouts or something, you know, something will go really, really well. And I'll be like, okay, I need to remember what I did before this one yeah. or this and I'll write it down. And so, yeah, I do do that sometimes, but yeah. That's good. Yeah. What about, I know like you were just saying, you're hoping to do this for a while and I'm sure you will be. Do you have like, once you're retired from triathlon or retired from this style of triathlon, do you have like anything you know you want to do in the future or you just focus solely on right? What's now? Um, well, it is, it is kind of strange. I've been thinking about that this year more because for as long as I can remember, like, the world ended in 2024 for me. So, um, yeah, I think that the way that things are going now, um, it's a little easier for me to see past 2024 and, you know, I'm going to continue racing world series and all of that. Um, but as far as doing something after triathlon, um, I, I highly doubt it'll be something not sport related. Um, so, whether it's some kind of coaching or involved in some um, organization to do with sport. Um, I have a feeling it'll be in that path, but I don't have anything really down yet. Who knows? Maybe I'll switch sports entirely. I don't know. Mm -hmm. So I always wanted to do um, uh, open water swimming, like just open water swimming. Like the 10K race? Like the 10K. I remember last year I was supposed to do – it was the 8K, the rattlesnake swim here. Yeah. And I just had to be out of town. I remember you took my spot, right? I did. And didn't you yes. win that race? I did win, yeah. yeah. That was hard, though. Yeah. It was, what is, is it 6K or 8K? I think, it was, I think it was 7 or 8 that you did. Yeah. yeah. I remember. Yeah. Honestly, though, that was, like, I haven't done a 7K or 8K swim since I was, like, um, yeah, like, swimming 8K all at once. I haven't done that. I hadn't done that since I was, like, 10, maybe. <laughs> and so... That last like 500 meters, I had like, I had like maybe four minutes on the second place guy, but I could see him back there, right? Like four minutes is not in the lake. Like you can see Mm -hmm. that, right? It's like 300 meters. Yeah. And so I, I would look back and see him and 
my like everything started cramping on me. <laughs> like my my toes went and like my feet and stuff. And I was just, like I was literally just thinking I was like Nick does this for a hundred k. Like I gotta I can I can make it the last like five hundred meters. But my toes were literally like crossed over each other. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I could barely stand up at the finish and like walk out. So. Yeah, that's yeah awesome. that was crazy. That's cool that yeah. you're like, because when I do those distances, it is it's not like racing, right? It's mm-hmm. I'm just going out and eating and swimming, like just yeah. moving in the port <laughs> in the water. But yeah, like you would have done better than I did, so I'm glad you took that spot. <laughs> well, yeah, it was it was a fun event. Yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll ho- hopefully do more of something like that in the future. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, what about like the guys you're training with? Obviously, like Jamie's getting to be the best at in Ironman at yep. his age and like you know, looking to probably turn pro soon, I'd assume. Um, How is it being around like these training partners that you have that are like as well on the top of their game? Like you feel like that is like a necessity to have for someone that's doing what you're doing or. Um, yeah. Jamie actually has his, uh, his first pro race in three weeks. Oh, um, yeah. So that'll be exciting. He's doing, uh, Ironman Coeur d'Alene. Um, so, and it's a stacked field, so that'll be super fun to see he's up against Sam Long and uh, Lionel Sanders and all those guys. Um, but yeah, no, it does help to have people, honestly, more more than just having someone who's your pace or is can push you in a workout. I think, honestly, just having like, like-minded people who mm-hmm. are just focused on something is way more valuable. Like, I can hit the paces on my own in the pool, on the bike, and on the track. Like I, I, I've done it for so long that like I don't really care. Like I don't need people around me to do it. Um, so I wouldn't say like it's crucial, but it's super nice to have people who, you know, wake up and like have a plan for that day and like these are the workouts I'm doing or these are the, and yeah, it's about like you know trying to help each other to do them. So I think it's just pulling motivation from other people. Mm-hmm. And then hopefully giving some back like that. I think that's the most important part of it. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. are like the sum of who you spend your time around basically. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. What, uh, what are you basically doing now that you don't have like eight hours of construction in between workouts? Yeah. What are you doing in between? Um, well, I'm, one thing is I'm just training a lot more. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I added like in the last like, I don't know, 16 months I've added like, um, three extra bike rides a week and all those things just take more time. So it, it's funny because before I was training close to what I'm doing now, but I was also working like a lot and, um, somehow still got it done. And now sometimes I'm like, I don't, I don't know how I did that yeah. even because if you give yourself, you know, 12 hours to do something, it's just going to take 12 hours. Whereas before I was like so efficient at yeah. just like quick getting, turnovers, quick turnovers. out the door. Yeah. Yeah. And now I'm like, uh, you know, like I'm going to eat something first and <laughs> yeah. then like, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I'm going to change my route and do this. And then it just takes time. Um, so yeah, I don't know. It is nice to have that extra time, but I would say honestly, it's just more recovery, more eating, and I sleep longer now. So, yeah. Yeah. what uh, what are kind of your breakdown like hours wise for the week for the disciplines? Um, I ride like training camp. It'll be more, but um, ten to fifteen a week on the bike. Um, running, um, uh, kind of like around eighty k a week. Um, nothing crazy, and then swimming like uh, twenty to twenty five a week. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, I think even more important, um, I mean, that, that, and then there's also gym and sauna and breathing and all that yeah. stuff in there. So it's over 30 in total. But um, I think the most important thing for me now is just um, I have 10 year, nine years of structure in me and on top of another seven years of just like swimming and all that. Um, and so it's about. <laughs> keeping the key workouts, um, being fresh for those ones. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it'll mean that I cut the long ride just a little bit short. So I'm ready for my Monday morning ride Mm -hmm. or my Tuesday track session or my Tuesday tempo session or whatever. Um, so yeah, more important than the duration for me at this point is hitting those intensities and, um, just paying attention to my body. So, yeah. Yeah. 
And I know we were just talking about before the podcast, but how much does traveling take a toll on you? Oof. Like how much does that mess up uh, like a schedule? I'm sure you have a, like a solid routine when you're in town here, yeah. but like traveling, how much does that affect? Yeah, I, I, I think it affects more than people think. Partly is just because the bike's always packed up, right? So, yeah, like... So breaking might, down the bike's terrible. <laughs> yeah, just like it's a pain in the butt. And then also you got to... If you if you have twelve hours, like you don't want to have to unpack it, ride for like two hours, and then pack it back up, and then so it is hard. Usually, it's more efficient to just like run and then get some food because you also have been on the plane and like the food's not good on the plane. Yeah, and you haven't slept, so it's just sleep. So honestly, when I'm traveling, like I don't even really think about that too much. Like if there's a if there's a treadmill in the hotel, I'll make sure I do something. Um, I've swam in hotel pools before, just like drills and stuff to try and get like some feel for the water. Um, but for the most part, when you're traveling, yeah, just volume's just going to drop mm-hmm. like 10 hour, 15 hour weeks on the bike become like four. Yeah. And it's just the way it is. So yeah, just keeping things like activated, like do, do my breathe way, do my um, little gym stuff in my hotel room and like stuff like that. You're not going to lose fitness. Yeah. It's just about like, trying to keep things going feeling yeah. good yeah. yeah especially when you're traveling like it's not like just the states and back going all around the world so. yeah yeah, yeah. it's yeah. complicated travel yeah <laughs> oh, yeah what um do you have any like advice for let's say younger athletes or just people in general that are looking to do maybe like get to the point you're at and whatever they do basically um yeah so i guess if you're just starting out with anything and you're wanting to reach the top level um I think um, just staying motivated and also trying to remember that it's uh, it takes time. Being patient is, I think, the most important thing. Um, so, yeah, just being patient, um, trying to remember why you started it, why you enjoy what you're doing. And then I also do live by the rule that um, motivation doesn't really um, stay around, like, if I'm doing a four hour ride, motivation gets me through the first five minutes and then it's like, all right, three hours, 55, let's go. And it's at that point, it's about being like disciplined. Right. So I do think that, um, yeah, like if in the reality is that if you really want to become the best at something, you have to do more than 99% of people at it. Um, so yeah, you got to be disciplined, but then also you don't want to fall out of love with why you started it. So try and remember, um, why you started, yeah, like why you started it and what you enjoyed about it in the, in the first place. And that's actually something that I've tried to remember this last year too, is like getting like, you know, caught up in like, man, I got to do this race for these points. I got to do these, this race. And like, oh man, I didn't do well enough in that one. I'm stressed about getting it into this one. And then like just sitting back and being like, I just did the Hamburg like world series and I led out of the relay. Mm. Like I beat, there were nine Olympians on the start line and I beat all of them. You know what I mean? And then being like, like 10 year old Brock who woke up at like five 30 in the morning to watch this would like not believe that that just happened. So you might not be where you want to be yet, but like, yeah, just stay process oriented and just enjoy it along the way. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think I always think of to do some shit that no one's doing. You got to do some shit that no one's doing. Exactly. Yeah. That's exactly it. Yeah. All right. Uh, last question is, uh, where are you going to put that, uh, Olympic rings tattoo when you get it? Oh man. Um, uh, I think for as long as I can remember, I wanted it on the right bicep mainly cause it's bigger than the left. <laughs> so that's probably the way I'm going to put it. Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. Well, I'm excited to see you there, man. Thank you, man. I'm yeah. just a pleasure talking with you. Yeah, you too. Um, do you want to do like give social medias and stuff? Uh, yeah. So my Instagram is uh, Brock underscore Hole. That's pretty much the only place you'll find me. Um, and Hole spelled H O E L. Yeah, Brock underscore H O E L. Yeah. That's it. Sweet. Yeah. Well, that's uh, episode nine. Cumber Breeze and Place C. Brock Hole. Thanks, Perfect. man. Thank you so much. Keep it on, awesome, bud.